Gospel reading is from Luke 9 this morning, verse 28 to 36, the Transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at that time what they had seen. Our congregation has a leadership team that is frequently doing their work behind the scenes. Maybe you're not always aware of it at the time. But uh, this morning, the team has a presentation that we want to share with you. We've called it 2019 and Beyond. Just so you know, if you're not already aware, I want to recognize the people who serve on our leadership team here at the church, even though today they are scattered all the way from Yellowknife to Cuba, all right? First of all, I want to say a welcome back to the former chair of our leadership team. Donna is home, along with Red. They are back from uh, Houston. I think we should give them a welcome back. <laughs> and although uh, Donna is termed out as the uh, chairperson of our leadership team, I want you to know that a lot of the work that has been done that has led up to this was done under her leadership. So thank you for that. I want you to pray for the people on our leadership team. Let me just remind you who they are. Norm, she's down in Cuba today. Rosemary, she's taken on the treasurer role. Val, who's the secretary. Marvin, Alan, Niall, Dave, and Carla, who's up in Yellowknife, as you now know. So pray for those people that they will be able to continue to guide this church in a way that's pleasing to the head of our church, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of the leadership team, Dave King has prepared a PowerPoint presentation, 2019 and beyond. I'm going to call on Dave to come now and to share with us this vision for the future. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Is this, there we go. So, uh, before I begin, I just want to just, on behalf of the leadership team, thank you all for, for attending today and, and going through this PowerPoint. Uh, what we're going to see is, uh, I guess, the future of the Wild Community Church and what it could be. So, without further ado, let's, let's, let's hit the next slide. We'll start with a with some scripture, and I thought this was appropriate, and it's Matthew 16, 18, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So this is when, I believe, when Peter uh, acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah. So we're the next one. So our church, in recent years, a number of improvements have been made to our church building. So the gathering place and kitchen were completely renovated. So everybody knows what a great place that is now. And there's a hardworking individual there. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. <Sherry. laughs> we got a 
beautiful kitchen now that, that's, you know, everybody just loves it. It's, it's a wonderful place for everyone to work in and, well, do dishes, I guess. <laughs> so, and an elevator was installed to meet the needs of seniors and others with mobility issues, and that was a big accomplishment. And, you know, it was a fair bit of work to get that in, but it is in now, and it, it serves a, a wonderful purpose for us. So this was a picture of the church behind there before the elevator was put in, and then, then the groundbreaking ceremony, of course, before we uh, started construction. So Doug Sider, the executive director of the Be in Christ Church of Canada, was present at, for the dedication of the new elevator. So following that event, Doug offered this thought. Well, it just struck me that something needs to happen. This church clearly needs a build-out. The foyer was full and the energy was palpable. So the addition to the south side of the main sanctuary where our lobby is now located was never intended as a standalone structure. It was designed to be the first phase of a major building expansion. And over the years, at least two different building expansion plans have been produced, but the time is not right to build. So our leadership team has been praying and seeking God's guidance to know if the time has come to begin planning and preparing for a building expansion. A growing congregation and a growing community will need a larger facility. When the twinning of Highway 7 is completed this year, it is anticipated that Delisle will see an increase in business and residential development. Delisle Community Chapel is the only church offering year-round services in the Delisle area. Last year, our church was deeply affected by the tragic death of Jeremy Napick. Many of us attended his funeral service at the Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Outlook. We were impressed by the beauty and the functionality of their church sanctuary and wondered who designed their building. Our leadership team made a follow-up visit to the Bethlehem Church and met with the chairman of the church board, along with his wife, who shared the story of their building program with us. We learned that their building was designed by one of Saskatchewan's premier architects, Bobert Frigstad. Bobert has designed many churches over the years throughout Saskatchewan. His firm also designed the new Church, uh, children's Hospital currently be, being built in Saskatoon. Obert is now retired, but this Christian man offered to do a preliminary work for a new sanctuary and social hall for Delisle Community Chapel, and he did it free of charge. He immediately went to work and drafted a floor plan. The proposed plan shows a sanctuary that is similar to the Bethlehem Church with seating for 250 worshippers. The plan also provides for a much larger social hall in the lower level of our building, utilizing the existing kitchen. The architect has prepared a rendering of our proposed enlarged and enhanced church building as it would be seen from several angles. So without further ado, let's have a look. So this is what the, the church building looked like if you were standing from the, uh, from the elementary school looking towards it. So you notice there's two, two entrances now. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. There's, so one entrance door will be where those windows are. And we'd also keep the one in our current lobby. So this is the rear of the church if you were over there to the south, uh, southeast corner. And you can see the roof line is, is uh, the, the new sanctuary will be quite large. And this is just another angle from, from this corner over here, if you're looking at the church from behind, uh, where, the, uh, where the pastor's old house is. <laughs> so this is what it would look like. The gray area would be the new build. So as you can see, the new sanctuary is quite, quite large. There's Almost 2,000 square feet just for seating. 
a new stage, storage area at the back, uh, well, as well as there's a prayer room and a new office uh, being built. And this is the, uh, the look at the basement. So the new parish hall would be 2,150 square feet, which is quite large compared to what we have right now. We can see 875 square feet in that seating area downstairs. As well, there'd be storage and mechanical and janitorial. So the parsonage, which is no longer needed, will be offered for sale at this time. The sale of the church house will provide the seed money for a future capital project. It is anticipated that the proceeds of the sale will provide at least 20% of the funds required for a major church building project. These funds will be invested in the Be in Christ Church of Canada until the time that our church family is ready to build. So in the near future, our leadership team will be seeking the input of the entire church membership as it, together we discern God's guidance for our church. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I entitled the message this morning, Wake Up and Smell the Coffee. Although, in the interest of full disclosure, this cup is empty right now because I don't want to spell, spill it out here. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. Abby read a passage from Luke that told about what we call the Transfiguration of Jesus. It was a time when he revealed his glory to his inner circle of disciples. Now it's not a case of new glory that was given to Jesus, rather the glory that was always his own was now revealed in a very special way. Did you notice what Jesus was doing at the time? When he went up that mountain with his inner circle of disciples, it says that he went up the mountain to pray. I believe that there's something significant in that. The glory of Jesus is most experienced in times of prayer. And who showed up when Jesus was there on the mount? Two men who played significant roles in the Old Testament times. Moses and Elijah. Moses, the great lawgiver, and Elijah, the greatest of the prophets. And it says that they talked together with Jesus. And what did they talk about? It said that he ta they talked about Jesus' departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. What does it mean by Jesus' departure? It's actually talking about his death. You know, Jesus' death was not an accident. He wasn't caught by surprise. He came with a purpose to die as a sacrifice for us. He loved us that There's a very interesting phrase in this passage in Luke. Verse 32 says, Peter and his companions, that was James and John, were very sleepy. But when they became fully awake, they saw Jesus' glory. That's why I called the message, wake up and smell the coffee. Listen to these verses from the Bible. Ephesians 5, 14. Wake up, O sleeper! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Psalm 57, 8. Awake, my soul! Revelation 16, 15. Blessed is he who stays awake. 
Now that's not just talking about being able to stay awake through the message. That's talking about being spiritually awake and aware. If we're not fully awake, we're not really fully alive. Peter and his companions were very sleepy. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory. We do not perceive Christ's glory when we are spiritually sleepy. When we're not fully awake, spiritually. It's amazing to me how two people can come to the same church service and one says, wow, wasn't that something, the way God showed up? Isn't it amazing what God is doing? And the other person says, same old, same old. <laughs> we sang a few songs, we prayed a few prayers. Guy got up and talked for a while and then we went home. One is spiritually alive and awake, and the other is not fully awake or wet. You know the, the famous prayer that some people pray when the message is started? It goes like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. The sermons dry, the topic deep. If he should stop before I wake, give me a poke, for goodness sake. <laughs> Where is the place that you are most likely to experience God's glory? Some of you may say, out in nature. When I get out, away from people, I get out in the wild. When I get out under the sky, that's where I experience God. And you know, that's not a bad answer. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament displays His handiwork. But you know, there's somewhere that His glory is even more likely to show up. Listen to this passage from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now, to Him who was able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, notice that? God can not only do more than we ask, He can do more than we can even imagine. Imagination is a very important thing. You'll hear more about that in just a couple of minutes. Now to Him who was able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us, to Him be glory. Now I want you to notice where the glory is. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we are not as awake as we should be. We're not fully awake. We're like Peter and the other disciples who didn't really see his glory until they were fully awake. What are some of the things that can keep us from being fully awake spiritually? Well, one thing is an attitude of negativity. You know, there will always be critics who can scan any new idea with a sharp negative eye and tell you exactly what's wrong with it. Their eyes and their minds are closed to new ideas. One of the most paralyzing phrases in the English language is this. This is the way we've always done it. You know, God says, I will do a new thing. Do you perceive it? If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. They say. There was a very famous evangelist by the name of White Moody. And one of his critics said to him one day, I don't like the way you do evangelism. And Dwight Moody said, well, how do you do it? The guy said, well, I don't. Moody said, I like the way I do it better than the way you don't do it. We need to be open to new ideas, and we need to seek to continually improve them, but not simply to point out where they fall short. Another thing that keeps us from being 
fully awake is, and I'll just use the word, laziness. Laziness. Ask somebody how they feel. Tired. Now, it's one thing if they've been working hard. But my goodness, if we're tired all the time, let's do something about it. Some people will say they can't come to church on Sunday because it's my only day to sleep in. Proverbs 6.10 says, A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. Now some people are physically lazy. They resist doing hard physical work. But many more people are mentally lazy. I'll tell you, one way you can tell if you are mentally lazy, and i got to confess, I fall into this category sometimes. One way you can tell if you're mentally lazy is if you spend a lot more time watching television than you do reading books. Just saying. Some people are physically lazy, more are mentally lazy, and so very many are spiritually lazy. Don't take time to pray. Prayer is spiritual work. Don't take time to read and study God's Word. Laziness keeps us from being fully awake. And what's another thing? Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Maybe I should turn it around and say really what's keeping us from being fully awake is it's not the fear so much as the lack of courage. There's a <clears throat> famous theologian, right, by the name of John Wayne. <laughs> he said, courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. Think about that one a little bit. You know, when Jesus was facing the cross, he went with his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there he prayed. He wrestled in prayer. It says he sweat great drops of blood. I mean, he was in agony of soul. And what did he ask from his disciples? Stay awake. Just watch with me. And what did they do? Tension, anxiety, fear, if you will. <laughs> they fell asleep. He came back to check on them. They're sleeping. He wakes them up. Goes back and prays some more, asks them to watch with them, comes back again, what are they doing? Sleeping. Finally, the third time he comes back, he says, you might as well just keep sleeping. The ones who are about to arrest me are on their way. Another thing that keeps us from being fully alive spiritually is indifference. We might not say, I don't care, but we exhibit an I don't care kind of attitude. I like the quote from Peter Marshall, who said, A different world cannot be built by indifferent people. We need to really care. Do you care for people? Do you, really, do you care for people as Jesus cares for people? Do you care for people with the care of Jesus? Which brings us to another thing that keeps us from being fully awake spiritually, and that is a lack of vision. Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe now for harvest. We need to see the world as Jesus sees it. We need to think and act as Jesus does toward the world. He was filled with compassion for the multitudes, the Bible tells us. He was filled with compassion because he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. When we gain a vision like the vision of Jesus... We seek to introduce people to the Good Shepherd who loves them and wants them saved. And then sometimes we're half asleep because we have false assumptions. Perhaps we assume, you know, the people in Belial already know that the church is here. If they wanted to come, they'd be here already. So we'll just sit back comfortably and keep the doors open. Would you believe that there are people in Delisle that don't even know that the church building is here? 
a longtime resident of Delilah, experienced a death in the family and didn't know anyone who could conduct the funeral. He asked a friend, and the friend gave him my name and phone number, and he called me. And he came to my office to talk about doing a funeral. And he says, I didn't know this was a church. I always thought it was part of the school. And he'd lived here for years. That wasn't quite as bad as something that happened when I was pastoring in Chino, California. I also served there as a police chaplain, and I did a lot of ride-alongs with different police officers. And I was out with an officer one night, and he was asking me where the church building was, where I was the pastor. And I said to him, well, it's down on the corner of Schaefer and Oaks. He said, Schaefer and Oaks? I said, yeah, it's right down there. He said, I thought I knew the, the city really well, he said, because I have to patrol all over the city, but I don't know where that church is. I said, well, it's, it's right there on the corner, Schaefer and Oak Street. He said, well, where is it from the funeral chapel that's on that corner? I said, that's not a funeral chapel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can have assumptions that people know. We can have assumptions that people realize that they're welcome here. Do you realize that a lot of people do not know or believe or feel that they are welcome? In church, it's so important that we get out there, give them a smile, an invitation, and a welcome to come to church. Come where they can hear about the love of God and the good news of Jesus. And then, some of us are not fully awake because we lack any sense of urgency. We think that there's all the time in the world. If we don't get to it today, we'll do it tomorrow. If we don't get to it tomorrow, we'll do it next week. It's easy to keep pushing back those things that are important because they don't seem urgent. We have plenty of time. But the truth is, time is short. And no one knows how short. I know that I was reading a book this week by John Maxwell. Uh, he's a very well-known leader and a trainer of leaders. And somebody asked him what he had discovered in life that surprised him most. And he said what really surprised him was how short life is. How quickly it goes by. When you're young, it seems like it'll take forever to grow up. I can remember being the youngest pastor in the BIC in Canada. And now, all of a sudden, I'm at the other end of the spectrum. We're getting close there. Time goes by quickly. And it's later than you think. Years ago, I became aware of uh, the motto for a conference that the Canadian Gideons were host, uh, hosting. Uh, the Gideons are the people who distribute Bibles many, many Bibles in many, many places. And uh, through the distribution of Bibles, people have found them, read them, um, and come to faith in the God who inspired the Bible. But they were having a conference, and their, their theme, their motto for the conference was this. Serve now the Lord and prepare yourselves. And I looked at that motto and I said, I think they got that backwards. Now, shouldn't it be uh, prepare yourselves now and then serve the Lord? And I was thinking that to myself, and, and the speaker got up and said, some of you are probably thinking we got our motto backwards. I'm going, uh-huh. And he said, no, that's the way we meant for it to be. Because, he said, if you think you're going to wait until you're completely ready, it's never going to happen. If you wait to share your faith, the good news about Jesus, till you're completely ready, you'll never get there. But as you begin now to share the best you can, God will use that in amazing ways. Some people will say, well, our church isn't ready. Yes, we are ready. We already have the command of Jesus. Go and make disciples, he said. 
Go and make disciples. Do whatever it takes. Teaching them everything that I have told you. Do it now. Today. Today is all we have. We live with an appreciation for the past and an awareness of the future. But today is really all we have. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. God wants his church to grow. God wants this church to grow. I'm not telling you that you have to believe that. I'm just telling you that I believe that. And many of you do too. Today, we have people who will be going out in teams of two. Just the same way that Jesus sent out his disciples. We're going to be going to the homes in the life. Not soliciting. Not selling anything. Not asking for anything. Just sharing a warm smile and an invitation to people to come and see. Come and see. Now, I think it's a beautiful thing, and I'm really excited about the fact that some of the people, in fact, quite a few of the people, who have indicated their willingness to go out are people who are new to the church. They are excited about what they found here and they want to share it. They want to share the fact that there is a family of believers where they are loved and where people are led into a relationship with Jesus. You know, Jesus said, you are my witness. You are my witness. Successful witnessing is simply sharing the good news about Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. Today we have been challenged to begin praying and planning for a building expansion. A building project is not done for the sake of the people who are here today. We have plenty of room for all the people who are here this morning. In fact, we could fill a lot of empty chairs yet. But a building project is for those who will be here in the future. It is for people who don't come to church yet. It is for people who may not even live in Delisle yet. It is for people who may not even be born yet. So you see, it's a very unselfish act. It's not something that you do for yourself. Building a church building is something that you do for people who are now unchurched. We will pray and we will work and we will give in order to bless others. This sanctuary that we're sitting in here today was built in 1965. How many of you were here when this sanctuary was built in 1965? Put up your hands. Were you here at the church or you were just here in the live? How many of you were actually here as part of the church in 1965? I see one hand. Marvin Zorb. Way to go, Marvin. But here's my point. Almost none of us were here. And the one who was here was just a kid. Right? A young boy. Like when this one years old. <laughs> nose is growing. Actually, 1965, what about 11 years old? <laughs> All right. But the, the point is that someone cared enough to build this place of worship for you. You can't pay them back. Most of those people are gone now. You can't pay them back, but you can pass it on. It's just like parents and children. Every one of us had parents who invested in us, loved us, cared for us, provided for us, Helped us along. Got us started. And it doesn't matter how old you are, you're always going to be your parents' kid. There's just no way to pay them back. You can't do it. But what you can do is you can pass it on. 
What they have done for you, you can do for your kids or for others. You can pass along that love and care. Same thing in the church. We can't pay back those who did that for us, but we can pass it on and do for others. I want you to realize this morning that you and I and every other person in this town and around this world has been created in the image of God. Genesis 1.27 says that God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Men, women, boys, girls, all are equally created in the image of God. Now there's a lot into that. But one of the things that it means to be created in the image of God is that you also are creator. Human beings have the potential to be creative. Now we can't make something from nothing like God did, but we make something out of what God has made and given to us. Human beings are designed to be creative like the God who created us. Now think about this. There is no creativity without imagination. What is the root word of imagination? It's image, isn't it? It's the result of being created in the image of our God. Every great innovation or accomplishment began as an idea in someone's mind. When we are fully awake, we use our sanctified imagination for the glory of God. I invite you to use your sanctified imagination this morning. Join me. In my mind's eye, I see women and men, young people, girls and boys, streaming into a beautiful new sanctuary on a Sunday morning, joyfully praising God because they love Him. And He loves them. Father, I want to thank You that You are already at work in our lives and in the lives people around us. Thank you, God, that you are already at work in this church and in the lives of the people who live in proximity to this church building. Thank you that you love every one of us. Thank you that Jesus was willing to die to save us. Thank you that he came back to life again and because he lives, we too can live a new life. And we can share it and show it and say it so that others will come to know him too. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join in our closing songs.